get you started. Good morning, everyone. I am Andrew Lofters. I'm a program director with the Academic Quality and Workforce with the Higher Education Coordinating Board. And we are here for a Higher Educational Regional Council represent, representative orientation. Uh, there was a memo that went out to all the institutions. Oh, first, before I get started, let, let me let me um, say thank you to uh, Victor Reyna for uh, setting up this whole communication with the institution so that we can have this orientation. And also for, for um, thanks to uh, Valerie Cabrera for sending out all the not notifications to the institutions and also my admin, um, uh, Christina Kelly. They were very instrumental in getting all these things approved. Um, this information, I'm gonna try to go over it and show you where a lot of the information is housed on the HERC website for the THECB so you can see a lot of it. Uh, notifications went out to all the institutions uh, saying there's time for the spring meeting and um, that there would be an orientation on this day. Um, notification asked that all institutions provide a representative to the HERC chair. Um, and uh, along with that notification, there was a listing of all the chairs and I will also show you that on the website. I don't believe you'll be able to speak. Is that correct, Victor? No, anybody can speak. Oh, they can speak. All right, so uh, right now, uh, we, I would ask that you would keep your um, computer on mute or your audio on mute uh, until you want to have ask a question. Um, I'll try to go through it as quickly as I can. And if you have questions, let me know and I'll try to show everything I can on this. And I hope everyone is doing well, especially in these trying times. And I know it's, it's difficult, but we're going to be doing a lot of things virtually as, as everyone can assume or imagine that things are gonna to have to be done virtual. So I, I appreciate your participation and I'll get started into this now. And like I said, if you have your computer audio, either through the computer audio or through your phone, please keep it on mute until you're ready to ask a question. And there's also a feature that's a chat feature on this WebEx that you can use that as well. And my colleague, Victor Rainer, he's he's looking at that as well. All righty. Let us get started. All right, Higher Education Regional Council is an oversight of, of many, but not all, off-campus lower division courses and programs offered by community colleges, universities, health-related institutions, public technical colleges, and Lamars. The main thing here is that it's off-campus lower division. That's the only thing that you should be, be reporting to the HERC for these spring meetings. Off-campus lower division. There is nothing online that should be reported. This is just off-campus lower division. There's two different ways that you can be off-campus. One is off-campus face-to-face at a location. Number two could be uh, that you are going what we call electronic to group. Electronic to group is basically, we call it video, synchronous video conferencing. Good example is let's just say I'm at a university and I have a course on my campus that I'm gonna also deliver to one specific location where students can go to that location and they can participate in that class even though they're not on my campus. They're able to raise their hand, they can see the teacher. That's, that's synchronous video conferencing, what we call electronic to group. It is location-based. It can't be anywhere. If it's anywhere, then it's an online uh, delivery. But this is a place that you have to go there and then through the electronic delivery, but you're also able to participate. Those are the two ways that we have uh, off-campus instruction or off-campus delivery of instruction. There are 10 regional councils in the state they were based off of the law 51.662 about institutional partnership agreements uh, and that these these regions were developed by the coordinating board and they the, the regions should come together to coordinate educational activities and through that law we have the higher education regional councils that deal with these lower division um, off campus offerings in the state and it's very important for the for the higher education regional councils because we don't have at the coordinating board, we don't have an approval process for lower division courses. So really, when we get the lists from the HERC, it's really important 
when we have to verify where people are doing off-campus offerings, especially if they're getting financial aid. U.S. Department of Education will ask us, do we have knowledge and are we approving, do we approve this particular um, uh, off-campus delivery of instruction? And really what we do, we look at your list in the hurt to make sure that if there, I can quickly answer back to the U.S. Department of Education for the financial aid. Um, if it's not, then I have to go back to each institution. So it's really important. Um, these are higher, higher education regional council meetings in the spring. Um, the higher education regional councils are composed of the president or designated representatives uh, from each participating institution. They can be either public or private. Publics are required to, to submit their off-campus regional plans. Uh, is, uh, independents or private institutions, they can if they would like to, they may participate. Council of Chairs, uh, Council Chairs are elected by the members and the term is determined by the members as well. They're expected to meet each spring to perform their duties as far as reviewing plans for off-campus education that you will have for the upcoming academic year. Uh, any business that arises outside of the year may be conducted electronically at the discretion of the chair. The chair really is going to tell how you will address off-campus offerings that may occur after the spring meeting. Therefore, the people did not, people in your HERC uh, did not review these off-campus offerings because it might, might have not have happened yet. The, the agreements weren't in place, but they happened after the spring. The chair can come, will devise a process that you can go ahead and submit those uh, notifications to your HERC, and then that chair will have a process where everybody can review them. Uh, it's the chair, it's the responsibility, oops, sorry there. Responsibility of the chair to inform the members members of the date and time and location of the spring council meeting. Like I said, the notification that was sent out to the institutions uh, requested that all participating HERC institutions send to their chair who the representative will be. And the, rep the HERC chair will also send me the date and time of the meeting and location um, by April 9th. Now, location, it is highly recommended. And we encourage that these meetings are conducted remotely, virtually, online, however you want to say it, especially in this time of the coronavirus. It's, social distancing is now the practice. And we encourage these to be done remotely. So that means that your plans will have to be delivered remotely, and you'll have to do your meeting from some type of remote platform. Responsibilities of the HERC. You review your off-campus lower division course and program offerings of each uh, public institution, as well as the private. I mean, privates can participate. You can see what they have. The publics have to have their review uh, in their off-campus instructional plans. Resolving any disputes that might arise from these off-campus um, uh, plans. Excluding dual credit. Dual credit. It has a part that says in there, and, and, and basically, since universities don't have a service area, they can go do credit wherever they like. Community colleges have service areas, but inside law, it states that uh, a community college may offer or uh, establish a dual credit partnership with the school district, regardless of what service area it's in. So therefore, you don't have any, you, these you report, but you will not have to uh, review them for approval. And we're going to have a, a, a different process for uh, reporting these dual credit because I've heard some concerns about the number of entries that people might have because of dual credit. And we think we have, and I want to thank the Metro HERC and Carol Haynes and their group for uh, coming up with an idea and we, we discussed it and we think we have a solution for that to make it not as tedious, dual credit entries. And then we hear study cooperatively the various methods of providing lower division off-campus instruction um, that would be the most effective and efficient uh, use of resources in the state. Uh, an off-campus instructional plan must be submitted to the regional council by each public institution of higher education that's planning to offer off-campus lower division courses, clinicals, and or programs in that region. If you're in your region and that's where that program is being offered, then you report it to your regional HERC. If you are 
sending or delivering off-campus instructional, off-campus instruction for courses or programs that is outside of your HERC. You need to report it to that other HERC, that wherever, wherever that HERC is, uh, is that is going to be the destination of your, uh, of your delivery of your program. So if it's in your HERC, you deliver it to your HERC. If you're delivering somewhere to in someone else's HERC, you got to tell them as well. They have to know what's going on in their region. Here is the uh, example of the off-campus instructional plan. Um, there's two sides. Well, there's two parts to it. That's on the when you get the um, uh, the link from the HERC page, which I'll show you later. There's one side that has, or one part that has programs, and one part that has courses. Right. This is an example of one side that has program and it gives you you tell where the place is you give them the address the location the name of the uh, program the type of award it's lower division um, it's a continuing program face-to-face -face. geographically responsible institution is where this program will be delivered so for instance if I'm delivering it in some other community college um, community college's service area, that community college would be the geographical responsible institution for where you're delivering that. And is there agreement in place? Yes. Now, if you are offering courses that are out for community colleges, outside your service area, they need to be the part on the top where it says programs requiring approval. If these are programs that are delivered outside your service area, right? either in your HERC or out of your HERC, but outside your service area, they require approval from your HERC. <clears throat> if it's inside your service area or community colleges, you would put them at the bottom part where it says require notification. Since they're inside your service area, they don't have to go up for approval in the HERC. This has to, you have to notify the HERC that these are the places that you're listed. And like I said before, it's really important when it comes time for uh, the, when it comes time that UNIS Department of Education asks us to verify, do we have knowledge of these places where community colleges are offering programs? I can look on this and I can tell. Uh, same thing with um, dual credit. Dual credit would be at the bottom part where it says requiring notification. Um, the difference this time, instead of having to list each program that you have at a certain location for dual credit, because most time it's at high schools, or I would say that high schools or you know some secondary school either in a school district or at a uh, private school you just need to then just list the location in that first uh, far left box you tell them, and then instead of giving listing each program in the program area just say dual credit program offerings then you can list like awards aa aas lower division uh, continuing Face to face, and you can tell everything else. You can do the same, but you don't have to list each individual program for dual credit. You just got to tell me where it is that is a dual credit program offering, and then you fill out the rest of the form. All right? That'll somewhat cut down on the amount of entries that you have to do on this form. Um, next page. This is the other side of the page. This has to do with courses. So if, you're, if I'm delivering just a course that's not part of a program, if it's part of a program, you just have to list it on the program side. But if it's just a course and I'm not delivering an entire program in a certain place, either off campus, face to face or electronic to group, just a course, I would put it on this side. Remember, those that are inside your service area, you don't need approval. Those that are dual credit, you don't need approval. They'll be at the bottom. Those that are outside your service area, up at the top. Those are the things that you would fill up, fill up at the top. I think the rest of the form is pretty self-explanatory. What you need to put in as far as the information that's required for courses. Um, and like I said, down at the bottom for dual credit, you would just say the location, so-and-so high school in so-and-so Texas. Um, instead of listing each course, and course title, just put in there dual credit course offerings, and then fill out the rest of the form. Then you can go to the next location. At least I know now. Now, the reason we do this for dual credit, just to give you why, there's two. Like I said, one, 
This is the only place that we see them. We don't have an approval process for those. We only see them on this uh, in, uh, off-campus instructional plan. Number two, there is a, a pilot program being um, conducted right now. I think it might be getting close to the end um, of different colleges. Can then start drawing pen. Now, now financial aid is involved, and it would be coming from a location which would be a high school. So therefore, we would definitely need to know where these places are. Might not need to know exactly exactly what specific course or what specific program, but I do need to know the location because they will they want to verify wherever there's financial aid. Being, being awarded. Okay. Andrew, you got one more. Okay, good, good. I was just gonna I was just about to ask you. Go ahead. <clears throat> what delivery type or dual courses that are offered online from the community college instructor with a proctor on campus? I'm saying say it one more time. Well let me see. Maybe I can see it. I don't know. Uh, check. Uh, delivery type or dual courses. So I guess they're basically asking is, is the type of course changing because there's a proctor on campus? There's a proctor on campus. So what, what I guess what this person is asking, if it was online where the student could take it anywhere, didn't have to be location-based, it's not electronic to group, where they are, yeah, but they have a proctor, but what I'm understanding, if the person will, law, if, will ask this, this proctor is not the teacher of record. That's what I'm assuming. If that's the case, if it's just an online course, it wouldn't be on here. If it is electronic to group and they have a proctor on campus, but it's not the teacher of record, that person is not teaching the course. The person who'd be teaching the course is the teacher of record. Um, so if it's off campus, face to face, that's that's you know self-explanatory. That's your own instructor out there on that campus. If it's electronic to group, where the person is on your campus and delivering that course or program, I'd say course. Let's just say course to this uh, uh, high school campus. That person on the college campus is a teacher of record. They're delivering that course to the to the location. The box on the high school. You cut up, Victor. I couldn't hear you. It says the proctor is on the high school campus. Right. There's a proctor on the high school campus, but it doesn't say that that's the teacher of record. Right. It seems right. more like a, to me, it's it's akin to um, like a lab assistant, you know, a, a facilitator, but not the teacher of record. It's still, even though there's a person on that campus, unless that's the teacher of record, I mean, that's still off campus face to face. I mean, it, it, it would, it, I should take that back. If the person at the campus is just a proctor, the person on the high school campus is just a proctor and is not the teacher of record, the course is being delivered from the college in one of two ways. One, it's electronic to group, and that is location based. You have to give me a location. Or it's online, and online is an on here. Online, the kid doesn't have to be in that class to take the course. They just happen to be there to log in. Um, you know, they log in on the computer. They can be in any classroom they want to. However, um, the person at the campus is not the teacher of record. It sounds like what they're saying is just a proctor. And hopefully, if they will ask again if I answered the question. And if not, I might need to let them ask at the end. How about that? Um, any more questions like that? So it says, so it is online in the delivery type on the form. You don't do anything online. This, this is only off campus, lower division courses and programs. Nothing online is going to be at that. There's only two ways that you're going to put something on this form. One is to, is to deliver it off campus face to face. Maybe there's someone there teaching. 
or electronic the group, which is video com video conferencing, where that on the college campus, I'm in a class, I'm delivering that class to a specific location. It can't be anywhere. Students have to report to that location. If there's a proctor on there, that's fine. That's that's between that's an agreement between the college and the school district. But that doesn't have anything to do with what you report on here. This is going to report just those two things: off campus, face to face, electronic to group. The proctor in the high school doesn't have anything to do with what you report, especially if it's online. Online means it can be anywhere. It's not location based. If it's an online program, anybody can chime in. I can send this out and it can go to 18 different districts. There might be proctors on there, but it's just online. It's not location-based. That proctor doesn't matter on this form at all. Because they're not they're not the teacher of record. Teacher of record who's the person who'd be sending that form that course out online from the college. I'll keep going, but let me know if they if they chime back in. The off-campus instruction plan, uh, I'm going to break it down by the type of institution. Uh, first one I'm going through is community colleges, and I put in red up there, in-service area delivery, dual credit, and exceptions require notification. And we'll get to the exceptions at the end. Out-of-service area require approval. So you have lower division, formula-funded credit and non-credit courses that are offered off-campus, face-to-face, and or electronic to group in Texas, uh, both with inside, both within and outside the service area. Remember, you're gonna you're gonna report what's inside and outside the service area. It's just the outside needs to be on the top part of the form that needs to be uh, approved. Inside of the service area needs to be on the bottom um, part of the form that just needs notification. All lower division workforce credit and continuing education courses including dual credit and clinicals that are offered off-campus face-to-face in electronic groups in Texas, both within and are outside the service area. Uh, all associate and certificate programs offered off-campus face-to-face uh, and or electronic to group both within and outside their service area. The top part has to do, first one is just courses, academic courses, B is workforce courses and continuing education, and C is all programs. Associate and certificate program. For technical colleges and Lamar two-year institutions, lower division formula funded credit and non-credit courses, including dual credit and clinicals that are offered off campus, face-to-face -face, and or electronic to group in Texas. That's because they have a statewide region. Um, associate and certificate programs offered off campus, face-to-face -face, and or electronic to group in Texas. Universities, lower division formula funded credit courses, including four credit extension courses, dual credit courses and clinicals that are offered off campus, face to face, and or electronic to group in Texas. And the last one, lower division credit courses, including four credit extension courses, dual credit and clinicals that are offered on campus as self-supporting. Self-supporting is something universities are able to do and what they do is they Say there are certain courses that they will not report for formula funding. They are inside the um, uh, distance education policy. So that's what makes them uh, have to be reported to the HERC. Those are basically universities, and not a whole lot of them have them, but the ones that do will know, and they need to report those if they're lower division self-supporting courses. So those are all the things that have to be reported and those some of them have to be reviewed, some of them have to be up for approval. Approval will be the ones at the top of the form, at the bottom form will be reviewed. So now these are the ones that have an exception to the review. We have off-campus lower division courses that are offered by a community college within a service area. Remember, they're not up for approval. These just have to be at the bottom of the form that you're notifying everyone. They're in your service area off-campus lower division, but they're in your service area, so I'll report it at the bottom. 
Off-campus lower division dual credit courses offered by a health-related institution, Public Hill Technical College, Lamar State College that have been requested by a school district and or high school. Now remember, we're doing this a little bit different. You're gonna tell me the location where the course is being delivered. If it's a course, you're gonna say dual credit course offering, then fill out the rest of the form. If it's a program, you're gonna give me the location in that far left box. And you're gonna say dual credit course, or sorry, dual credit program offerings, fill out the form. But those will be at the bottom. They're not up for approval, you're just notifying everybody. Um, university off campus and community college out of service area. Remember that out of service area, lower division clinical courses, which meets all of these conditions. Number one, the student enrolled in the course is employed at the place where they're taking this clinical. The person is having a clinical outside the service area of the community college or it's off campus and it's lower division clinical. Remember that, off-campus lower division, if the student is employed at the place, if it's a university, if they're employed there, or if it's a community college out of the service area, student is employed there, the facility where the clinical is being, is being offered uh, provides written verification that there will be no reduction in number of uh, clinical opportunities available for use by area institutions. So in other words, if I'm doing it outside my, I'm delivering this, um, I have a student going outside the service area for a clinical. That outside service area facility needs to have written verification that I'm not, even though this person's coming from outside the service area to theirs, I'm not gonna reduce the number of clinicals for the people uh, or the service area of the college that I'm in, right? It's gonna to continue to be the same. And then the Institution of Higher Education shall uh, notify the council and provide the council with this verification from the clinical facility. When you have those things in there, lower division clinicals are just notification. If it's a lower division clinical that doesn't have all three of these, they need to be approved on the top. All right. Um, you should, like I said, chairs should be sending out notifications to all the um, higher education institutions and the representatives because representatives are supposed to have or institutions are supposed to have sent to the chairs who their representative is for this year the chair will tell everyone when the meeting will be held by april 9th and myself once you're done and all the meeting is completed we need those instructional plans and there's two places that we'll get them one is to us and it'll be sent to the document submission portal. And that's what that first link is. The document submission portal is not open to everyone. There's only certain designated people at each institution that have access and a password to the document submission portal, usually in the chief academic officer's office, the president's office. You would have to go, it's like putting in a new program proposal. That's where the same place that you would submit that type of information. That's where you're gonna put this. And we will take that information and we'll store it for each institution that puts it in. The other place is at the texasherp.com site. This is a site that is housed and has been run for a number of years by TSTC, and I appreciate them for running that. And what it allows institutions to do is post all their instruction, institutional plans, off-campus instruction plans, just in there, off-campus instruction plans. And what that allows me to do, not only do I have it in a folder, but what I can do, this site is very fr user friendly and it goes back for quite some time. But I can just look and see everyone's institutional plan and easily access that. Not only can I, but anybody else can too. So it's a very useful site. Um, like I said, for the document submission portal, most likely, unless you're the person that has that access, you need to take it to your person on campus that has the access for you to to submit it. For the HERC website, um, there's a part on the site at the bottom that says having trouble with this site, and it has this email that I have on the screen, CS Evans. If you don't have a password to submit your materials, your off-campus instructional plan, you can email that person. They'll give you a, a password to put it in, and then you can submit your, your off-campus instructional plan there. All document submissions are due by June 30th, 2020. So we'll, we'll 
going for. And I know these are different kind of times. I think this process being one remote, two, we sort of tried to make things a little bit easier with the dual credit reporting might not be as bad. And like, remember, well, like you said, anything that's just online shouldn't be on this report at all. Either off campus face to face or electronic to group, which is synchronous video conferencing. Those are the only two ways. If it's just an online program, it shouldn't be on here. Even as the person asked, if there's a proctor on campus, does it make a difference? That's online. And if you have any questions and want to clarify what type of offering you have, here's my contact information. And at any time, contact me so we can try to make this as smooth a process as possible. Um, while we're here and I'm sharing my screen, I'm going to see if I can show you some of the other things. This is the Higher Education Regional Council uh, website. Things on there that I talked about. Um, right here, you have a list of the current chairs. And that will look like this. It'll have each region. Of each region, who their member institutions are. If your institution is not on there, especially if you're a newer one, and it's not on there, let me know. I'll put it on there. If I if I missed it, just tell me again. I'll get it. I'll get it on the list. And it has it for each of the ten regions. You can easily find out which who your chair is and who to contact. Um, it also gives you the template right there underneath the chairs so that you can download it from this site. Um, it also gives you the link to the texasherc.com site so that you can upload your pro. Now, I need to say that about that. Um, let me go back to that one. Back to this slide. Um, when you're submitting, the chair will determine who submits the materials to us and to the Texas Herc. Chair may require that everybody submit everything to the chair, and then they will post it to us and to the Texas HERC. The chair may say that you each will have to submit it to these two sites. So you need to find out from the chair how they want that process to be conducted. Uh, the last thing I believe. Uh, we have the meeting here. When I'm done with this, I will try to put, I'll try to do this as quickly as I can. Once we get the recording where we have the PowerPoint presentation, uh, well, probably with the webinar is, I have the recording. We'll just have the recording link so you'll be able to see this if you have any other questions. And the point is there with my, with my contact information, as well as my email address down here. Andrew. Okay. Uh, uh, yep, go ahead. Someone asked if you could go to the and fill it out for a dual credit course as an example. Okay. All righty. Let's do one here. Um, we are doing a dual credit course. We're going to be at Sample High School, Sample Texas. Let's just even be more specific. One, two, three, Sample Street in Sample Texas. All right. And now instead of saying what the course and course title is right in here. You know, you have the ability to fix this. So I'm gonna do this. I would do that. I was doing this, what I would do. I would take that box and let's 
sign on it. I would have a whoops. Now I'm stuck. There we go. Oh, uh, if I can get out of this. There we go. So let's just try it this way. Now, what I was trying to do was was make this a, a merge cell. I could it just wasn't working with me. Of course, it's not. Let's try it one more time. Oh, there we go. So there we go. Dual credit course offerings. Then I'd go over here, say DC. This is continuing. And we're going to do this one. Let's just be special electronic to group. And responsible institution. Um, service area. Service Area Community College, and we have MOU with uh, ISD. We'll just call it Sample ISD. That gives you examples same for the, the the dual credit course offerings, and you can do the same thing up here. But the but the main thing is is that I have this address that tells me I'm doing dual credit. And it'll be down here at the bottom of the form because it's a notification and it's not a um it's not a uh an approval because it's credit. Like this one up here where they're doing auto body repair and dual credit, what we're doing, we're just taking out this part here that has the each specific course. We're not we're not gonna do that. We're just gonna say dual credit course offerings. So you should just basically have a location. Dual credit course offerings, fill out the rest. Go to the next one, do that again. Did that help? They said yes. Yeah. Outstanding, outstanding. Please, any other questions? Any other questions? So they can they can speak or they can't. They can. Uh, one one question: uh, If we are new to this role for our institution, uh -huh. and we get a off-campus courses that were reported last year for our institution, I'm with UTSA. Yeah, you should have that up on the Texas Herc site. And if it's not there, contact me. I'll find out what we have because I have a we have a list of what was sent to us. I can get those folders and see what's in there. But to that Texas Herc site. It goes back for years. You should have it up there. And if, if you have a problem, fine. Please, you have my contact information on the uh, website, on the PowerPoint, or you can email me. Whatever you want to do, I'll help you. I'll help you get that. Not a problem. He said he got it. Thank you. Oh, good to go. Good to go. Any other questions? None. None so far? Good. All right. Um, just want to say to everybody, please, please be safe. Please be safe. This is a really trying time, and this is a really serious illness that's out there. So do, do whatever you need to to keep you and your family safe. Thinking good thoughts for everyone. As I said, please, if you have any questions, let me know. We can work it out to make sure that this works as smoothly as possible in these current times. Um, wish you all the best. Please be in touch if you have any questions. Um, and thank you for participating. And if you have any questions, like I said, feel free to contact. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, you got something? Uh, several other. Very much.
I'm sorry, I couldn't hear you, Victor. Several of the participants have said thank you very much. Oh, quite welcome. Quite welcome. I think we'll be shutting it down, Victor. They're going off. Thank you. I appreciate it. 